I peered into the picture. It couldn't be. The headline read, Car pulled from lake. I shut the paper and several people turned and looked at me. I kept my head real still for a moment and then I practically spilled the rest of my coffee as I jumped up from my seat. I didn't take the paper with me, could barely touch it. Knocking over a chair on my way out of there, I made so much disturbance that the person sharing stopped talking and watched me leave. Are you okay? Asked someone by the door. What did they care? They didn't give a damn if I was okay. And what the hell did okay mean anyway? I nearly knocked them over trying to get out the door. If I didn't get out of there, I knew I would scream right there in the meeting. Oh, God, did I leave my keys in there? Where were they? Where were they? Oh, good. They were there at the bottom of my purse amidst the clutter. I didn't have to go back in there. No one followed me out. I was glad because I didn't want to explain myself. They always had some sort of insipid answer like work through your issues. Did they think I hadn't done that a thousand times? No, this wasn't issues, not an emotional trauma. The nightmares, the dreams of Krishna and the water freezing water I needed to talk to maybe not Krishna but one of them any one of them if I could just talk to one of them it was such a surreal drive home as if I were in another town not my hometown not Oshkosh The streets were strange, and I made a wrong turn. How could that happen in the town I'd been driving around and around in, complaining about the restrictive boundaries of for, well, since I started driving at age 16? I was too tired to do the math, and besides, I was never good at math. I couldn't find the street. It was supposed to be only two or three blocks, a right on Bowen, three blocks, and then a left on New York Avenue. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw, for just a moment, Gay, riding her bike, headphones on, hands free, arms waving, dancing wildly in the air, jamming and swinging to bugle gum pop. Okay, I recognize this road, but there was no way I could be out here unless I'd driven at least 20 minutes longer than I thought I had and in the completely wrong direction. I was out by the carp ponds where we used to get stoned and stare at the lake. This lake is named after an Indian tribe, you know. I think that calls for a peace pipe. Gay fills the bowl after deseeding the bag by throwing those seeds right onto the floor of my little blue Chevette. The fire lights her eyes and cheeks as she sucks in off of that peace pipe. It's Krishna's pipe. We have been using that thing so long. I don't think we would know how to smoke a different one. It is wooden, like Krishna's room. All the red clothes that hung from her walls and the red bedspread with silver and gold etchings and glittery embroidery of elephants and palaces. Not like the embroidery in my house of darling hot pads and little farms with ducks. It's not a tribe. It's a chief, I say, blowing slowly and meditatively through my pursed lips. I hand it ceremoniously to Krishna. We had a whole bag of pot. We were okay for several days, but who thought about several days? No, you're both wrong. Gay and I look at her as if we had no idea what she was talking about. We didn't. 
it's a chief and a tribe. But then, after what seems like an eternity, she stops.